Hi guys, welcome back. And today I'm going to be looking at creating a fashion image from my recent portfolio shoot with the beautiful Izzy. Uh, I've already created one image in the series. I'm looking to create three. So um, this one, I want to match my previous image as much as possible. Uh, but I'm going to look at creating a square composition uh, with this nice kind of lilac -y purple background and just edge the image up a little bit. I don't really want to do too much, but I want to kind of give it a bit of oomph and a little bit of gloss. I always like a bit of gloss. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, clear up my background a little bit. So using my patch tool, uh, I'm going to come in and anywhere I can see a little bit of a line or a little bit um, of something that's not quite perfect on my paper backdrop, because uh, she has been through the walls, uh, we will just take that out there. Um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to deal with these lines in a minute, uh, but let's just take out any of these initial bits first. Uh, so up this line here, if I just draw around and take up, it's going to be roughly okay. Um, now I could, if I wanted, I could soften these shadows out, uh, but I actually I want them there. I think they add a little something to the image. We were using hard lighting uh, and that creates those kind of nice solid shadows, which for this image, I actually want to keep. So this line here, I'm going to try and draw just this dark patch. I'm going to pull that up a little bit in there. Pull that up in there. Uh, and when I want to soften these areas that have a bit more texture in them, what I do is I duplicate my layer. I use Control J, duplicate the layer, and I put that layer on a 50% layer, um, which means that everything on that layer is only half visible because if I then grab a bit of the flooring and put it over another bit it's going to slightly soften what is on that area and I find it's just a really nice easy way to just slightly soften something that you don't want fully removed um, I want texture there uh, I want things to actually um, feel like she is I want to feel like she sat actually on a floor I don't want to make it all too smooth uh, and then this background I can smooth out a little bit if I want to here. Perfect. So let's might smooth that line down. There we go. Oh, oh no, I'll create a smudge. Pay attention. There we go. Um, and I quite like quite like that shape there. I think that looks good. So let's do the uh, cropping. Now I know already um, that I want a square crop. I quite like where it's naturally fallen. Uh, I was tempted for a while to do a larger crop, um, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and then I can always bring it back in afterwards because I'm cropping with a ratio, and I'm not using um, I'm not resizing the image. It's ratio. I'm not going to lose any pixels here. What I'm gonna do is actually add. I'm gonna gain space to this image. So recropping it later shouldn't give me too many issues. Um, I've got it on content aware fill. So all these white areas here should fill in themselves uh, and it should give me a finished canvas. I'm quite a fan of the square composition. I've always found it quite nice. That's perfect. It's done a good job. I will then do my 50% uh, layer again and soften over any bits where it, it sort of was a bit of a harsher blend. Um, I might soften over that shadow as it moves away from her, for example. Let's just take that. There we go. Overall, quite like that. Okay, so let's go and actually look at Izzy. So first thing um, I look for is any errors or any issues that I might want to remove. Stray hairs, uh, weird reflections, anything on the clothing. Uh, I can't actually see anything. We've got a little bit of redness there, which is no surprise because I had a kneeling on the floor. Um, nothing particular that I want to remove. Uh, so uh, I'm going to do a skin edit. So what I do with a uh, beautiful skin edit, I create four versions of my layer. I'm only going to run through this quick. I'm sure you'll be able to find other videos where I've gone through this in more detail. Uh, I'm then going to create a high pass layer uh, and I'm going to put that so I can just about see it with no color. I'm going to hit uh, ooh, I'm going to hit soft light, I'm hitting overlay, wrong one. Uh, and then I'm going to turn that layer off. 
the layer underneath, I'm going to apply a surface blur. Now that surface blur, uh, I want to just be dealing with the colouring. So don't worry about the fact that it's going to really soften that skin. Uh, now that's quite um, blurred. So I'm going to bring that radius down. So it's just sort of within the face area. I can, I'm not losing too many shadows because if I bring that radius all the way up, well, it's going to take a while to show this shadow here is going to be softened so much that I'm going to lose the definition. There you go. I'm going to lose the definition of what is her cheekbone. Um, and all I'm looking at do is softening uh, and creating a little bit of a glow, um, which is absolutely perfect there. So this layer here is going to be the colouring, um, is going to be the softness, and then the top layer when I add it back on, as you can see, if I come in, is going to be my texture. So I can take the texture on and off. Uh, obviously I don't want it that soft, so I'm going to bring that opacity down about 60%. And if I then grab my three layers, I'm going to put them in a box and we can then group them together and I can mask all of that in together. So I've put a mask on, I'm going to invert that and now I can draw that in. Um, now some of you uh, techie geeks might be asking what was that third layer for? What was that one there? If I'm honest, I've just always done it as a safety layer. You don't need it. Um, it's just been one of those safety layers. If I ever want to go and grab something from that original skin, I've got it in there to kind of pull from. And it doesn't matter what I do to my bottom layer. My own weird mentality. You don't have to add it. But you can if you want. Um, so just by drawing over the skin here, you can see we're adding a, a nice soft glow effect but not actually changing anything particular there is every bit of texture is still there before and after it is the coloring and the glow that is what's changing um so always remember to do uh, the neck and follow through with other skin too because the amount of times you see images and the face looks perfect it's amazing it's model ready and then the neck skin is like really rough um, and it, it's not like it was even a problem before, but you can tell the difference. Uh, so let's come around, pull around down to here, and I'll pull around to there as well. And I don't like to do over fingers too much, but I'll bring a little bit, little bit in there. But overall, I'm happy with that. That's added. <clears throat> my voice is going. That's added a little bit of glow, so that's looking nice. So I'm going to flatten that layer. Yep, you can keep it if you want. I don't. I, I commit. If I'm happy with what I've done, I commit. I flatten it. We're good. Uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to remove a bit of this hair frizz. Uh, so I'm going to uh, clone stamp and just pull from across and come in a little bit from there. Now I've got a, a brush um, that is uh, 200, but I'm using large files. Quite soft around the edge, but enough that it still gives me control you can zoom right in I recommend you do zoom right in when you're doing this um, to make sure you're getting it right uh, because what you often see is people who have done this where it goes too solid or what I think is worse is when you get that kind of haze comes across like that I think that just looks really really peculiar so let's put this back before I do something wrong you can see where it's a little bit darker. I'm going to actually blend that out with the patch tool anyway. And pull it out from there so you're not going to be able to tell. And same down here. Okay, let's do the other side. So I'm going to pull that in. And just very fluid movement. Your wrists should be moving around quite freely. You shouldn't be uh, rigid. You should be able to just move your wrist around like you were painting. I always consider editing very similar to, to painting. Let's pull that hair across in there. Um, and I'm just going to darken that bit there because it's caught the light just ever so slightly. Let's pull that out. Perfect. Okay. Happy with that. So next is my contour. I, I don't tend to do too much with the contour because as you can see with my lighting, we've contoured that cheekbone lovely, we've contoured those, everything's there. All I do is sort of enhance what's already there. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to hit soft light and I'm going to fill with 50% gray. Uh, and then using my dodge and burn, I'm going to very simply 
or in the areas that I want to be more defined. Let's pull around. And just coming from under that chin in there. Um, now, that bit there, as you might have seen, that I just removed, this lighter area here, uh, that's lighter because the light is hitting from above. Her actual shoulder, her skin here, is reflecting back, just as if you had a reflector underneath, and creating this light. So by me shadowing that, that's more realistic to, to what the light really kind of would look like, just coming from above, um, because her shoulders act as a reflector. If she was wearing a black top, you'd, you'd not notice um, you didn't see that at all. I'm going to shadow across the, the line that's already there. And I will shadow down a hairline. Um, there we go. Just add a bit of definition. We can then choose uh, to define uh, muscles, legs, and anything a bit more. Reality is with this sort of lighting, it's already done. You can already see I've got a glisten there. You can already see all the glow. Everything already exists. All I'm doing is enhancing it ever so slightly. So I'll turn that off. Turn that on and you can see the difference. Uh, I'm going to turn my opacity down a little bit. I like to just add a bit of blend in there. Before I flatten that, after I've done the skin and I'm happy, you can do this on the same layer or you can create a new one. It doesn't really matter. I will look at hair and I will create a little bit of glow in that hair and just follow the curls around. It's not going to work for every hair type, every hair color, but it will work for some. And then Clothing as well, anything that might benefit from me enhancing the highlight a tiny bit. I can paint that in and I can shadow my other areas. So if I now turn that off and on, it's crazy, isn't it? I think that's the coolest thing ever. I've always liked doing that. Um, I, I actually don't necessarily enjoy editing all the time. Um, I like the process. I like the before and after. But that has always been quite fun. So you can see where we've got a little bit of light coming, uh, the shadow, sorry, coming right around this side. So now I'm going to, I want to replicate that. I've got my mid-tones at 20% and I'm going to just draw down this side with my slightly feather brush because I want that spotlight kind of effect. Uh, and I can play with coming in at the bottom. Now there's many ways I can, I can gradient, I can do all different sorts of things. For me, I quite enjoy drawing it. I like it feeling freehand, I like it feeling like it's something I've created, it just makes me happy. I feel like we've gone into a bit of an album cover now, which I'm kind of loving, um, loving that vibe. I think that's looking really cool. Perfect, I'm kind of loving that. I think that, that looks great. I think she looked amazing. Everything about that's looking really good. Uh, last thing I always do, check my levels. You can see that we're a little bit low on the highlights, so I might pull them up a tiny bit just to balance out my histogram there. Um, but it's gonna be a mainly, mainly dark image and mid-tones, it, it is a darker image. Um, it is a moodier image. So the last thing I'll do is I'll have a look and I'll see if anything's distracting me that I don't want to be distracting me. So um, squinting your eyes is a good one for this. If you squint your eyes a tiny bit, you can kind of see what draws your attention first. I'm drawn exactly to the face where I wanna be drawn, however, these buttons are pulling me a tiny bit more than I want them to be. What I'm going to do, there's two options here. You can do that 50% layer um, and actually just remove because then you can kind of control how dark that's kind of coming across. But that can give a slightly hazed, faded away look. So the other option um, that I quite like doing is if you create a brand new blank layer, so there's nothing on it whatsoever, you grab a brush tool and you grab one of those lighter toned grays, but not quite, not quite white, paint over it and we put that on darken or multiply, um, probably darken for this. We can then turn the opacity down and it becomes a very similar, so we're kind of removing the highlight almost I'm pulling that down a little bit. So if I turn that off and on, you can see we're not noticing that nearly as much. Now, yeah, I'm a bit of a control freak. Maybe no one would have never noticed that, but it bugged me, so I dealt with it. Um, overall, loving the rest of this, thinking it looks really, really good. Nothing else I want to particularly change or move. Um, I like the colors, so I'm good, I'm happy. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.